Hi, today we're going to be going over advanced custom fields and how to use Cadence Elements templating to show the data that you have stored in your advanced custom fields. We are going to be using Sally's cat blog as a fun example. Sally has a huge following. Well, actually she doesn't, but we're going to pretend Sally has a huge following and she wants to list all of the beautiful cats that are in shelters and try to find them homes. So she is going to use advanced custom fields about all of the cats that she's come across at shelters and list these on her blog because she thinks she can do a better job than the listings at her individual shelters. Let's get started and see how to help Sally out with advanced custom fields. This video is going to assume that you understand how to set up your custom post types. We use CPT in order to do this and set up a custom post type for favorite cats. And we have that listed over here. You can see the favorite cats are listed. We're using advanced custom fields to actually add some additional fields so Sally can list these on her site. So we've got the cat name and adoption link which is a URL, some cat photos. There might be some additional photos she'd like to show. She wants to play around with some dynamic background images, and we'll show you how to do that. And she is using the WYSIWYG editor for the bio because she wants to be able to bold and italicize and maybe even add some links into her content, the gender of the cat, and their favorite foods. So let's get started and see how we can lay these out. First of all, you're going to need Cadence Pro in order to do this. Once you have your Cadence Pro license installed, that will open up these Pro add-ons. You're going to need to head over to Cadence and Hooked Elements. Make sure that that is turned on. Once that's turned on, you will see Elements listed over here. And then we can go in and start adding a template in order to list some of the content for our cats. So let's get started with a couple of things that we'll need to do. First of all, we're going to add a title for this. This is just internal. So this could be the cat template. Up here, we have some settings for our Cadence Elements. We have this set as template. We could, of course, switch to one of the other different element setups. And then we need to go find um, a sample cat to work with as we populate our content. So over here, we go to select preview post type. And then we select one of our cats that's going to sort of be our model. We're going to use the Clever Kitten in order to do this. And once that is set, we can close that. Next, in Cadence Elements, we're going to have to determine our placement. For this particular one, we're going to replace the single post content. And we are going to display this on a single favorite cat. And we could say that we wanted to set up this for just those cats that are authored by one individual author. Or we could set up a separate template for each individual cat, or we can set it up for a group. Now, if we do it individually, we can select, let's say we want to select, you know, this cat, this cat, and that cat. And then the other ones might use a different template altogether, but we're just going to set this up for all cats at this point. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is set a row layout, and we're going to set it up with two columns like this. And now we have a dynamic capability of adding a background for this row layout. So we'll want to go to our block settings, go to our background settings, and then we can have enable dynamic background. Let's see how to do this. Go to post custom field. And then we have that custom field set up with the background image. We have that set up. And now that's kind of bright and we would like to darken it up just a little bit. So we can scroll down here to an overlay for this entire row. And let's say we want our overlay color to be on the darker side. You can play with this and see what it looks like in various ways, but we're gonna have it be a little on the darker side and we're going to make it a little bit darker still. We can of course add a gradient here if we wanted to do a couple of different colors have some fun with that. Tons of things we can do, but we're going to just do a normal one with that darker overlay color. Let's get started adding some content. We're going to use advanced text block for the heading, and we want that to be 
white text and we are going to go find the post title for the current post. And of course we set that up for the clever kitten. So that's gonna come in just like that. And where you see the blue underline, that means it's dynamic content. Over here, we are going to set up an advanced image. Go find that. And then over here, we wanna find the dynamic image, enable that. And then we want to find the post custom field. Actually, let's do this a little bit differently. Let's, here we wanna set the featured image over here for this particular dynamic piece of content. And then we want to add a caption. We want to pull in, let's do it this way. Let's pull in post custom field. And we are going to go find our cat name and add that dynamic content underneath. And that looks great. Let's see, we could style that, stylize that in a number of ways. Let's go find our caption settings down here. Let's say our caption color, we would like that to be white. And we would like the font size to be just a tad bit bigger, but not that big. How oh, about like that? We want our caption to be centered. And maybe on this image, we want to add um, some animation on scroll so we can have it fade up. We'll try that. And I want to add a drop shadow just to kind of set it off a little bit there. Great. Next, we want to bring in some dynamic HTML. Now this content was set up with the WYSIWYG editor. So the dynamic HTML is going to be the field that we'll need to look for. So we will look for a post custom field and our bio. And there's our beautiful bio coming in, but of course we want to change the text color to be lighter. And we can even change the link color Let's say we want that primary link color to be a little bit, let's go with that blue there. And let's say we want the hover color to be white. So how would that look? Good enough, great. So we have our dynamic HTML. When we choose that WYSIWYG editor, we can use the dynamic HTML block to pull in the content. And it's gonna pull in all of the HTML that we have brought in to that particular block. If we just use text, it would strip out all of that styling. Now underneath the dynamic HTML, we would like to add, insert after, we are going to add a section block. Now here we're gonna add the adoption link and we want this to be conditional. So if there is no adoption link available to us, we're not going to show this section at all. So we're gonna have some advanced text in here and that is going to be, let's go heading five and white. And that is going to say adoption link. And then we are going to add some dynamic HTML here. Um, let's just go to our post custom field and find that adoption link. And we are gonna add that right there. Now, the thing we'd like to do with this section block is we wanna use conditional display here so that if there is no adoption link. We don't want that to show at all because that'll look kind of funky, right? So the condition is for that post custom field. We're going to find the adoption link and then we're going to leave that as not empty. So we could have all kinds of things. We could have it equal to a specific thing. Conditional display is very powerful. So this is going to only show that section block if that post custom field is not empty. So if there is no adoption link, it is not going to show up. All right. So under our section, we are going to add another custom field here. And first we're going to say favorite foods. And we are then going to bring in some dynamic content here as well. Post custom field. And we are going to scroll in and find the favorite foods. 
and we are going to list those. Now that kind of looks funky here. So let's do something a little bit different. We don't want to just list stuff out like that. So we are going to add a dynamic list block right in here. I'm going to add it right underneath. So that dynamic list block, we're going to go find our current post. It is going to be a custom post meta, and we are going to add our favorite foods here. And we would like that to be horizontal, and we are going to choose a different divider, and we are going to add it as white text so that we have our favorite foods listed underneath. And of course we want this text that could stand to be a different color as well. Maybe we will change this to instead be advanced custom text, favorite foods. We would like that to be smaller and we would like that to be white. So we've got our favorite foods listed. And then underneath the photo that we have here on the other side, the advanced image, we are going to insert after, and we are going to add the gender. And that is again, going to be a dynamic list item. And that is going to be from the current post. It is going to be custom post meta. It is going to be a custom field of gender and we would like that to be centered and it's going to be white as well. So now we have all of our custom content entered in here. It's looking pretty good. We might do some additional modifications of the design, but at least we have some basic layouts. So we're going to go ahead and publish this template and then we are going to head over to our favorite cats and just see what it looks like. So let's go view our clever kitten. And we saw that animation happen right there. We've got Kaylee, the female favorite foods. We probably want to add some space in here, but at least we have some content here. We could add this as a button instead. If we wanted to go edit that, we could edit as a button and that link separately that way. That might be the right thing to do here. So let's head back to our dashboard. And let's go edit that template and see what happens there. We go to our elements. There's our template. Instead of doing this this way, let's go ahead and, and we see this if is there because it is conditional. But let's add that as a, an advanced button. All right. And our button text would say, adopt me. And then we would like the link to be a dynamic link. So we can go to our post custom field and we can go find that adoption link. That is it. That's all we need to do. And we might want to change the look and feel of this button a bit. We could go set our button settings separately here and you see the adoption link is there. Um, Let's change the text color to white and our background color. Let's go with that deep blue and our border color. We're going to use that as well. And I just lost it. And we want to change the hover colors as well there. So we want our background color for the hover to be sort of a brighter color. So let's go brighter and let's see what that looks like. Nice. And let's update that. Then, of course, we can add again with this, we can add that into uh, conditional settings as well. Conditional display for this button. So we can say that if our post custom field of the adoption link is not empty, then it will show that block. So that works for sections, it works for buttons, and a few other things. So let's go ahead and take a look at our kitten and see what it looks like. Favorite cats and view our kitten. Yeah, and we still have that text there. We could probably take that out, but we see that we have the adopt me link and that's just going to example.com. So we're not going to click it, but you can see how cool that looks. And now if we want to look at some of our other kittens and see how this template is applied to them, 
got the boss man. He's got a testing link in there as well, his favorite foods. Ray looking very regal there. He's the boss of everything. And how about this one? Different background, because that was a dynamic thing. So this background was set differently. And we don't have an adoption link. So it looks like she is not available for adoption. And we've got this cat here, Oliver, who does not have a background set, but we still have that background overlay there. And let's take a look at another cat. Again, no adoption link, but looking pretty good. And again, no adoption link, no background. So dynamically, this site is ready to go. Perhaps we would like to create an overview page that is going to basically give us an overview of all of our cats. The best way to do this is to use the post grid carousel block which is a cadence block. And you can choose how you'd like those styled. I'm gonna choose this one here. And again, this was the real estate template. So we're pulling in those posts, which are still there, but we can go find our custom post type here and pull those in. And there's tons of different settings that we can set here, but we're gonna just pick a couple here. Our layout settings, let's bump it up to three. We can change the gaps between them, maybe make them closer together. We can have display filters and post containers. We can put a border around each of them. If we wanted to do that, the container. We can cha change our heading backgrounds if we wanted to add some color like that. And padding is all open to you as well. The images, you can also choose to not show them or show them. Of course, we want to see our cats. And there's tons of other different settings if we wanted to change how that read more looks or we could take the read more off altogether. And this is still clickable, but we can change that. I'm going to leave it on. And I am going to make the border color blue and the text color white. And make it a little more fun there. So then if we publish this, and then we view the page, we can see all of our cats, and we can click in and take a look at each of those templates. This is how easy it is to use Cadence Elements templating in order to set up advanced custom fields and bring that content forward with your site.